So whoever is attending the first demo, kindly please share your details in the chat box. I'll forward the last session recording, the course content, the documents. Okay, please share your details in the chat box. I hope everyone is uh, attending the last session except Nagasai. Anyone who is attending this first class? I hope everyone gone through the recording which I shared you last class. Even if I not received any recording, please provide your email address, your phone number, details, I'll forward you. So this session is completely a practical. So we had discussed some basic things in the last class. What is the BI process? What is the advantages of a cloud? What is the method how we are going to extract the data from a different sources? Okay, we have used one example with the DMART, how customer purchases the products that information will store in some storage account. Depend upon their budget, they go for the systems, databases, files, data files, Azure storages, data lakes. So wherever the data is there, our responsibility is to extract that data, clean the data, make some transformations on that, remove the unwanted records, unwanted columns, which is not required. And as per the logics, we need to apply in the transformation area. So you cannot do all the things in the this layer. So there is some process. Okay, you cannot directly do transformations. When you extract some data from any systems, you first stage the data in some storage account. Okay. You're going to stage somewhere. You're going to extract the data from blob storage. You stage somewhere. You apply some logics. Then finally, you load in the production. Because when it go to the production, the pipeline should not fail. The data should not get failed due to any kind of reason. So before itself, we're going to do the checks in the transmission area and the staging area. Okay. So there are some layers we're going to check here itself. Then we're going to send the data to the final destination, wherever the destination is. Whether your data lake you're using, whether your data marks, whether you get summarized data, cube data, or your data lake, Synapse database, data warehouse, so wherever they give you target, we have to load the data into the target or sync or destination. So from there, the reporting team will connect and they'll generate the reports. So this is how the internal work, how it's going on. The same thing we need to implement in Azure. We're taking the virtual machines, no need to purchase license, storage account maintenance cost is less no maintenance team is required backup is not required all backup is going to take in azure etl tools are providing the azure sql databases are there you not required to treat like a sql server only has a data warehouse there's a separate synapse database is there you can use that synapse database which is developed on top of some algorithms round robin replication and the other databases you can use in the Azure cloud. Whatever you want, you can purchase it from the store. So complete enterprise softwares or services you're going to get from cloud. So our main target here is 
the main target here is how we are going to extract the data. Okay. So we are going to extract the data. This is high level of picture. So what we are going to do here is wherever the data is there, what we are doing, we are extracting it. Whether it's the databases, whether it's the files, whether it's the blob storage, whether it's the data lake storage. We're going to extract this data. If it is on-premises data, we're going to connect some connectivities, gateways. There is the integration runtimes we call it. We have self-hosted integration runtime, SSI integration runtime, there is other integration runtime, lift and shift we have. So those things we are going to apply in the data factory. We clean them, we'll massage them, we'll process them in a proper information. And once that information is processed, we're going to load wherever you want. Wherever we want, we can process then the data. And as a reporting till, they'll connect the reporting and they'll extract from different sources, combine the data, and they'll do the on daily basis refreshment. And they'll display in the different monitors. The main our part here is this is the extraction loading part. Okay. Now internally we'll go now in the picture how to design this pipeline. This is high level information. When you go inside, this is our part we are going to do practical. So if I go inside this one, I will find like this picture. If I go internally to design the data factory, inside data factory, we'll have a pipelines. Inside pipeline, you require connections, you require sources, you require again connections, you require sources or destination. And the components to work, to extract the data, to transform the data, we require activities. This is the internal part of the data factory. This is the high level of picture. Okay. That is the high level of diagram. This is the internal part of picture. You need to design it. Okay. You need to design this pipeline. So to design this pipeline, we require storages, two storages are required, the service is required, okay. All right. All right, so we'll discuss here now. So yesterday we discussed about this picture. Now we'll go with a practical. So for that, to implement this one, first thing is we required is, what we required, the services. First we required is, before going to this one, we required account, we required subscription. So to start with Azure, we required the account. Okay, to start with the Azure, we require the account, a subscription we call. So there are three types of subscription. One is free subscription, other one is student subscription, other one is pay as you subscription. So free subscription, you can work for 30 days. It is giving you 200 USD dollars. Student account, always free, which is giving you 100 USD dollars. In Indian currency, almost 13 to 15,000 credits. You cannot withdraw that amount, okay? And pay as you go, this is a premium account which companies uh, use this account, okay? Now we'll go with uh, this account. So you just required one system, one internet, one login. That's it to start with a So I'll just connect to this 
azure portal portal.azure.com okay don't worry about the resource group resources services the complete picture i'm going to explain you in regular class now our requirement here is this is a requirement So I'll create the service here. So there are already some services which is already created. The resource group is like a folder. Inside that, we have two already service the SQL Server database. Okay, and SQL Server. I'm going to create the data factory here. Click on data factory. So we have detail level, don't worry. I'm just creating the same for a sample. This is for a test to ADM one. Okay, at the same time, you can do CI CD with our GitHub or DevOps. But all these things, we'll discuss a separate topic on that. Review and create. So I'm making it later. I'm configure this part is later. Okay, for now, for testing, we don't require it. Okay. When already I'm having the service, I need to create the storage where I am having a files. And this is, I'm just creating it now. Okay. Everything, whatever you do, is completely through notification. You no need to do manual installations. You just need to fill, fill a form and you have to run it. Okay, it is created a data factory. And again, data factory in version two, version one and version two. By default, it is a version two for all the services, for all the account. Earlier it was version one also then. Now it is by default version two. Okay. So this is my main important tabs. Here is three tabs which we are going to completely work. Here is development. Here is a scheduling the development here is the connections okay whatever you create a connections you have to create here that is what this data fact is more popular so now you can see how many connections are that we have so these are the list of connections that you have amazon some blog storages cosmos db data lake data lake one gen two gen one okay sql accounts other accounts, on-premises databases, Cassandra, analytics. So there are a lot of, lot of services, the connections inbuilt already you have, which you not even used. Okay, SAP complete connections, Oracle connections. Okay, the PostSQL, SAP connections, API REST online. Okay, by using HTTP request, SMTP, Salesforce connections that we have. Snowflakes database. So this many uh, databases, this many connections that you have. Okay, even if it is some cases of you are taking the data from analytics, you have this many connections. So before developing any pipeline, before developing any data, okay, before developing anything, what is my source? Okay, what is my destination that you have to first, you have to target. What is my source? Here I'm having a picture. My source is the blob storage or the data lake storage or my have to load the data in SQL database. The SQL is also in Azure, not in my local system. 
Do you want me to show? Let me connect my SQL server, which is in Azure. I'm connecting in my local system. Let me show you that as well. So I'll just go to the resource. I'll open the SQL server also. Okay. Here is a SQL database. This is a SQL database. This is my SQL database. And it is very flexible. So whenever you require, whenever you require, you can scale in and scale down. So in the listed session, I explained whenever you require to increase the storage, when the transactions are IE, you can increase and you can decrease anytime the storage accounts. It is very flexible in cloud. So if you observe here, my database here is how much GBs is allocated. Let me show you. So currently it is holding one GB, okay? Currently it is holding only one GB. If you see in the monitor tab, you no need a separate DBA team to explain how much GB is left, how much GB is there, okay? Currently one GB is there. This much of space it is used, already this is there. Tomorrow, if you want to increase the size of the database, simply just go to the storage compute and increase it. Okay. This is if you want increase, I'll increase 2 GB. No, this is not sufficient. Whenever you want, go with the standard. You want high level of database storage, go with. And this is also not sufficient, go with premium. And this is also not sufficient, go with high level. So it is a scale and scale down. Whenever you require, just go here. Just go and just preview here. That's it. And click apply. And it is a scaling and scale down. Whenever you require, it will automatically change based on the configurations. Now you can see it is changed to increase more 1 GB. All right. So I'll access the server in my local system. So for that, I'm going to add my IP address. Okay, I'm going to add my IP address to access in my local SSMS. Here I want to connect my system. That Azure server, I want to connect here. So what is the server name? This is my server name, copy and paste. What is your database name or a user name? This is my user name and the password. So while creating the account, I have given user and password. Don't worry, I'll show you from scratch. For time being, I'm just connecting here. Okay, this is connected. Okay, now let's go with the data factory again. Come back. This is a data factory. So I'll create one service. We are in the data factory now. So what is our source? What is our source? Source is block storage. Can I create account? Let me show you. I'll create here on portal.azure.com. You can work with multiple tabs at the same time. I want to create storage account. Storage account, what type of storage account you want? Data lake account or normal storage account? So this is my a data lake account. Okay. I'll just take a backup in my local redundancy. Don't worry, I'll explain all this stuff. I'll just convert to the data lake and I'll review and click. Okay, just review and create only one click. The storage space will allocate for you. And this is something like whatever you are using the cloud storage. Okay, one more thing here, very important is Whatever you're storing in the cloud, whether the data store or anything you store here, that doesn't mean it is storing in the cloud. There is a background, there's a data center will be there. Okay, even when you try to store some data in the G drive, Google drive, you'll have up to 15 GB for each Gmail account. You're storing your document, images, other stuff. Okay, but where it is storing? So there is a, some data center is there. For that, 
there's a separate team is working on behalf of you. Okay, so that is what for Microsoft also for support, there is a lot of opportunity. When you go for MindTree, those people will only hire for Microsoft as a vendor. Okay, the storage account is ready. This is my data lake account. Okay, data lake storage, which is converted to blob storage to data lake. So this is my container, data logs container. Container is like a folder. Inside this container folder, I'll upload some files. And that file is a shareable. How you will share with someone? In the Google Drive, you'll give access, right? Here also, you need to give access. So I can give access to someone. I'll just give a property and I'll share this file with someone by providing this URL. Okay. All right. How to give the other method? There is access keys also there. I'll show you later part, okay? For now, my file is ready. My data is ready. This is my data with a different format, with a different delimiters format, okay? Now I have to use this file in my data lake. Storage is ready. File is also ready. Pipeline is ready, okay? SQL Server is ready. Now I have to use activity. Let me show you. So let's create first connection. The connection is for storage account. That is data lake gen1 or gen2. There is a gen2 account which we created. What is the difference between both of them? We see in regular class. Okay. So right now I am using the connection integration and name is auto. Okay. The account name is data lake account. Key is loaded. Just review and create. So SQL account. My destination is Azure SQL database. This is my another link service, which is pointing to the SQL account. Azure SQL database. What is my server name? My server SQL server name here is The SQL server, server name here is just copy the clipboard. Okay. This is my server name and username as the same. All right. Just provide the password. So, why I'm creating connections? Because I want to store the data here. Data factory separate service. So, what we have did here is now we created an individual account, we uploaded a file. We created already service there. We are creating the services, link services, connections between this account to this account, between this account to this account with the help of connections, with the help of connections. Okay, done. Two connections are ready. Two connections are ready. Now I'll create a pipeline. The pipeline is about moving the data from data lake to Azure SQL database. Can I go create a copy data activity? We're going to learn all maximum activities. Now here it is showing what is your source? My source is a data lake. My source is a data lake gen2. What format of the file is this? The format of the file here is CSV format. So I'll just select the CSV format. This is my uh, data lake. Okay, data lake storage, data set. Already connection is ready, which we created. I'll just browse the connection. Under the data lake storage container, we have a file, right? We have a file in data log that that one only I'm selecting. Okay. Just import the schema and treat first row as a header. The data set is ready. And just change the format of the file. Format of the file is delimiter is pipeline. Why I'm saying delimiter is pipeline? Because the file having the separation of column is delimiter as a pipeline symbol. 
So I just mentioned here is triglyceride. Okay. Import the schema. Import the schema. Done. You can preview the data. Just check whether the data is coming in this different columns. Yes, it is coming. This is my country data. I'll just go and I'll point here. That's it. Okay. Now sync. What is the sync? Sync is a SQL server. Already connections are ready. Just I have to tell which table it is. SQL server connection is already ready. Can I create customer or country data? Country data data set with the same name. I'll create table also. Okay. If you don't know how to create table, if you don't know SQL, no need to worry. Automatically will create a table. So there is no table with the name called country data. Okay. I'm going to create now this with a name called country data. Okay. I don't have any table in Azure. You want to see, you can check here. Okay. I don't have any name or data with the its name. No object. Now it will create at runtime. How it will create? Because I'm going to say here is to create if it is not there. And do the mappings. That's it. This is my country details. That is country. And this is my instead of salary, what I'll do. Revenue. Okay. And this is the details. Okay. All are good. We created connections here, two connections, Azure connection, data lake connection, SQL connection. In the pipeline level, copy data activity configured. What we configured? Source we have set as data lake. Table maps done. Validate. No issue. Now let's execute it. So what it will do? It will extract this data from the storages by using your ETL. It will load the data. So this is manual work we are doing. It will extract the data. All connections are ready, and it will uh, by using copy data activity load the data over here. Why we are loading in the table? The question is why we are loading the data in the tables? Why can't we do analysis in the file itself? What is the purpose of loading the data in the table? So my data is ready. Data is loaded from the data lake store gen 2 2. It is only one file which having the records is 16. Is it? Can I go and check the data now again? Yeah, 16 records is there. So if by mistake, if I start one more time, what will happen? By mistake, somebody started again this uh, pipeline. What will happen? The data revenue will get duplicated. The data values will get duplicated. Instead of 16, you will get 16 plus 16. The data will get duplicated. So that is the reason we have a topics like full load, delta load, increment load, regular load. Okay. This loading process you have to know whether you are going for ETL developer, whether it's a data factory, whether it's SSIS, whether it's informatic, or whether it's other tools. You need to know this basic thing. This is a foundation, basic thing you need to know. Without this, there is no interviews at all. 16 plus 16. If I go and verify one more time, 32 records. No, sir, I don't have SSMS. I don't know how to connect in my local. Can you show in the cloud itself? Yes, definitely. Here in the Azure SQL database, there's an option called query editor. Just log in with the user ID. What is the user ID and password? I'll tell you. Don't need it. How to create? I'll tell you. There's a separate session from Azure SQL databases. So, okay, there is a step-by-step -step process we have. We cannot directly jump to the data factory. 
there is step by step process we have with that process we'll go okay i'll run the same query over here so how many records will be there 32 records okay right total 32 records what happened the data is now is ready over here data is extracted transformed and loaded can i analyze the data in the power bi yes definitely if you know power bi if you know basic tools you just log into the power bi and connect to our azure sql databases that's it can we present the data in the graphical way yes so presentation is not a big problem the data the materials okay the material ingredients that is more important the preparation is more important then only the present other person can do the pre data presentation still we can do it still we can manage it. this part also there's not a big problem so now i'm showing this part how we can connect simply download some tool download the tool get the data from where you want to get the data there's a lot of sources like the, how we have in azure sql this many sources you can get the data but our data is in azure sql database do we see anywhere azure sql database if you don't see search here how many connections are there in azure this many connections are there in azure so wherever the data is there we can extract whether the data in the sql database the data in the block storage the data in the data lake wherever is there you can get the data so i right now my data i have processed in the azure sql database by using my pipeline okay i have loaded my data that is the 32 records the 32 records through pipeline which i loaded now i have to present in the report just connect azure sql database what is the server name come here select our server name go to the overview in azure copy the server name use the clipboard don't select and copy database name click on connect what is the user id and password provide it okay it is already connected no need if it is not connected we'll ask user and password which table that we are using country data right i'll select my country data table you want to get the data yes i want to get the data this is the 32 records this process you just load it So the more important part is how you manage the data, how you load the data, how you get the information, how to manage it with the different formats that is more important rather than developing the report. 32 report is loaded because our data is got duplicated. Right? So in what level you want to present, you want to see the data in funnel chart. Select the funnel chart. Design it however you want. Country-wise data you want to show. The country-wise you want to show the revenue. Show it. What is the data type? Yeah, that is the problem here. Why? Because we have not given this value as integer. That is the problem. Okay, all are work in your case. Can I change? Which 
No issue. Because of the operand that we have uh, varical, we cannot do sum. Okay. That is the reason the data is not showing properly. We have changed to the data type in integer and we should. You use funnel chart, you use by chart, you use however you want. You can present the data. Okay. Now you want to select the column chart. Go with column chart. Now you want to show this one. It's up to you. So presenting is not a big problem. Then you can uh, publish wherever you want, whether you want the desktop, whether you want this one, this one, wherever you want, you can publish and do the refreshment every time. So once the data is published, automatically this refresh, instead of doing manual refresh, we automate them. Automate refresh is every one minute, two minutes, three minutes, based on that, we do it. Okay, so internal structure of this one is this one. We have created the data lake, I'll show you this in the next class, how to create SQL Server. Already we have SQL Server. We utilize by using the connection. So this is more important. Okay. So what we have done here, simple, we use copy data activity. We use source as a data lake. Data lake is required connection. We created a connection here. We created a connection. Two connections are created. Now we can schedule it instead of doing manual run. Instead of doing manual run, I will add no trigger. Every one minute I have to load the data. This pipeline, instead of running manually, I'll create no trigger. Manual trigger. Instead of manual trigger, we'll schedule it now. <laughs> what is that? Which schedule it is? Normal schedule. Okay. Normal schedule will create. So every one minute I want to start. Okay. I am there are different types of triggers we have. We're going to discuss in regular class. Don't worry. For now, time being, I'm just showing you every one minute. I want to start the trigger. That's it. Click OK. Your trigger is ready. And it is not a deployed. I have to publish it. And save it. So these are some basic things you need to understand. So this is all we are going to discuss in regular class. Okay, on high level, I'm just explaining you. So you no need to worry about. Now you can close it. Whenever you want, you can work with this one. You can close the data for yours. Every one minute, you can monitor your success or fail or, or whether it's executed, when it is executed, which trigger it is, that all you can monitor here. So already 32 records are there, right? Now, every one minute it will start. Do you want to see whether the trigger is trigger created or not? There is an option here, triggers. Okay, you can check every one minute it has given. So, I'll just monitor over here. I no need to manual run. It is executing. The pipeline is executed. Which pipeline it is executed for that trigger? There is a one which is triggered by this trigger. This pipeline is triggered by this trigger. The trigger name is this one. Schedule trigger. If I go and check in the data, I'll find more data here. Duplicate again. See, it is increase the count. You want to see? Thirty-two plus again. So one plus these values. Keep on it will execute. Again, next one minute, again it will pass. Next 16 records. Okay. So every trigger it will schedule. So live data. Trigger is started, 64 records. So there are different types of triggers that we have. So what those triggers is there, we'll discuss in regular case. Okay, we have just achieved this requirement. We have created so-and-so requirement. So tomorrow onwards, we'll start 
with the topics. There are different type of topics that we have. First, we'll discuss the topics. The topics are already have mentioned in this one. Okay, Azure accounts, Azure storage accounts. Again, in the storage account, as I said, in Azure accounts, there's many topics that we're going to cover. Okay. Again, in the storage account, you have different type of storages, like a normal block storage, uh, file share storage. There is a queues. Okay. There is a table storage. This is the normal comes under the normal storage. Now, when we talk about the data lake, in the data lake, there are again two to three modules data lake, Gen 1, data lake, Gen 2, and data lake analytics. Okay, then we have a use SQL. A use SQL is not a database, it's a topic under that. We have a use SQL database, we have a use SQL manage instance. Another one is Azure SQL in VM with different operating system and versions. This is all topics we're going to discuss. Then we'll discuss different type of virtual machines. You manually have to create it. When you are going for cloud, system will not given, the developer is development not given. You have to create, you have to create by your own self virtual machines that we'll discuss. And more important, SSI is SQL Server Integration Services. This is one of the topic under MSBA, that is the ETL tool. So this is the parent of your data factory. Then we'll go our main topic, Azure Data Factory. Okay, ETL. Then we have other topics like the data bits, data uh, logic apps, to automate your mail alerts, to schedule some triggers, logic app is there. So other basic topics are there. Azure Active Directory is there, Synapse is there, okay? And other basic other topics, storages are there. Okay, Azure Active Directory, there are many topics are there. I'm just listed on high level. Later we'll discuss in detail level, okay? There's a migration topics are there by using backpack file, by using backpack file dot BAK file dot Azure Assistant migration tool is there. Okay. Data migration tool is there. Before migration, we're going to do assessment. So these are all our basic high level topics. In detail, we have many things. So we cannot directly jump to the data factory. If I directly jump to the data factory, you'll not understand. If I create pipeline. Okay, I have given you source. I'll tell you source is in the SQL server. This SQL server is my local system, on-premises SQL server. When you don't know about self-hosted integration runtime, you cannot create a connection. When you don't know about Azure SQL, you cannot create the connection. So definitely you need to know the services in the Azure. I'm not talking about the all the services you have to know. No, you're not required all the services. You are going for data engineer, you are going for data factory. We want those list of services that you have to know. Because as I said yesterday also, Azure is a very big subject. You cannot go and all the services. If you see in Azure, there's a lot of services that we have. There are a lot of services. IT team will work on their services. Analytics team will work on their services. AI will work. This is only high level, okay? In detail level, many things are there. So DevOps team will have separate. Database team has separate. Our uh, other team is separate. Integration team is separate. Migration separate. Networking team is separate. Security, storages. You cannot learn everything in the Azure. We only learning what is our background and what is targeting to the data factory and what is targeting to the data lake, oh, sorry, this data factory. Okay.
Got it? So we'll discuss all these topics. And uh, don't worry, in, in detail level, we have each level in detail information we're going to discuss. Okay. When you talk about Azure Data Factory, also there are a lot of lot of services for each component we're going to discuss. When to use, how to use, in which case you have to use, and then runtime when need to be used. If I directly cannot jump to the integration or self-hosted runtime. So what is the purpose of that integration runtime? How, in which place we use in real time that we're going to discuss. Okay. Now today we have seen trigger type to schedule it. And also we have seen how to load the data from data lake. Data lake to Azure SQL. Like this, you have some activities. Blob to SQL, SQL to blob, or reverse method, or data lake to data lake. Any requirement you come, you have to ready with this data. These are the complete case studies that we are going to discuss. Okay, data big topics, some Power BI is not that much of important. Yes, as I said today, how we implemented, we can implement to connecting any storages. Got it? Any questions, any doubts guys so far? 